Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Next Door NetAdmin. I am currently in the IT room for one of our customer sites uh, because I have a brand new server. And I figured some of you watching may never have actually seen a server. So I'm going to walk you through the basics. This is a very basic server. It was purchased for doing firewall duties. So it's not advanced. It's not fancy, but it's going to serve the purpose of me showing you what it looks like. So let's take a look, shall we? All right, so this is our brand new server. Uh, this one happens to be a Dell. You can see I've already got rack rails attached to it. Um, I added that because that was easy to do out of the box before I went and did anything else. Most servers need to be custom built. Um, you cannot go and buy these off the shelf at Costco or anything like that. They should be built for a specific purpose. And I'll walk you through the process of doing that in a future video, hopefully. You can see from the front here, like I said, this is a Dell. This one happens to be an R250. The R means that it is rack mounted, which means it'll go on these rails and then get slid into a rack uh, rather than being a tower, which is the other style, which sits on a desk or a floor, something to that effect. This particular one has two hard drives here. These are not hot swappable. You cannot pull them out and put them back in while the server is running. Uh, and that was mainly a choice to save on uh, both cost and we don't really need it for a firewall server. So that's the way that that works. I'll spin it around here so that we can take a look at the ports on the back. Ports on the back, we have a serial port here. The serial port technically is an optional component. I like to add it because when you actually look at the cost difference, the cost difference is zero. Big old goose egg. So why not add it? But more importantly, a lot of enterprise networking equipment still has a serial interface. And it works in some places where a USB port would not work. So it's really good to still have a serial port available, especially when you're doing network duties, and that's useful. Standard VGA video port, the iDRAC port, very important. I'll cover that a bit more detail later. Two um, gigabit ethernet ports, USB 2, USB 3. The difference here, and I don't know how well you can see it on this video, the USB 3 is marked with the SS for super speed and it, the port is blue. USB 2 is not, it is black. That's a pretty standard differentiating point between the two in case you ever need to tell the difference at a glance. Nothing or apparently nothing here. This is actually a RAID card, so we'll take a look at that later. And just the single power supply. Uh, again, this is not a heavy duty server. And in, at this site, we actually have two different firewalls on the internet connection. So if one goes down, we'll use the other. It's not necessary to have this particular unit highly available in and of itself, because we've got another unit to take up this slack there. If we open the server up, this open, lift the lid off, get rid of that. <clears throat> well, temporarily, not permanently. On the inside, you can see that there is facility for another two hard drives here, but those are empty. We just have the two here. These will be mirrored in a RAID 1 configuration. Anything that is blue means that it is cold swap. The server has to be turned off before you can touch anything uh, with this for safety's sake. Um, if it was hot swappable, the icon would be orange. Orange means that you can swap it while it's hot. Cold is blue, hot is orange. Yeah, okay. Cool, pretty standard. Power supply, this one's just a 450 water, but it's physically larger than a lot of more powerful power supplies. Goodness knows why. Probably because you don't need the really small components that come with the denser configuration. I've only got two fans here. There's facility to add another one. I take that back, there is a third fan, but it's all the way over here. <laughs> uh, we could add another one in here. 
theoretically we could put one here but as you can see currently it's just got a, a blank on it because we're not running enough under this shroud to require it now let's pop the shroud off there we go you have a cpu just one on this particular model of server and we have two sticks of memory here the shroud helps a lot for making sure that the air from these fans gets pushed through the cpu in order to cool it effectively and the memory as well it'll just jet the air along that and that'll help keep it cool i'll leave that off for now actually come to think of it this is the pcie cards this entire assembly as you can see by the blue stripes here and here the whole thing just lifts out the cables are pretty short so i'm not necessarily going to lift it out because i only have two hands one to hold the camera and one to show you what i'm pointing at <laughs> this is a raid card this is going to be i'm pretty sure i put in an h uh it was an h something the the lower one i i want to say h330 but i don't remember 100 percent if my <laughs> if the if the model number on that is correct or not they may have moved past the h330 i don't remember anyway this is what connects to the hard drives and provides the raid one mirroring but as you can see a server motherboard is fairly self-contained and compact bios battery pretty common to see. Oh, there's a little PCIe X1 there. No, it's not. It's an IDSDM and internal USB. The IDSDM is um, a Dell specific thing so far as I know, but you can also use this to attach an internal USB port, not necessary for this firewall. So I don't have it spec'd or loaded here. But like I said, this is a very, very basic server and as you can see the inside is very compact which is what it needs to be the shroud pops right back on there that's basically it now i mentioned before this idrac port important to me the idrac is the integrated dell remote access console so you won't see an iDRAC specifically on an HP. HP has the ILO, Integrated Lights Out Management. Uh, and the standardized name for this would be IPMI. Don't ask me to remember what it means right this second, but iDRAC is the Dell-specific variant. You can use an iDRAC as a shared connection off of one of these network cards. But when you have some of the higher levels of iDRAC, if you pre-configure the server with them, they come with their own dedicated network port. Um, this particular server and all the servers that I order from Dell have the iDRAC Enterprise. I'm going to show you why that's important as we actually move to getting this server configured and installed. But for now, I'm going to pop the lid back on this and I'm going to install it in a rack and then we will move on to how I'm going to configure this for being a firewall. So, quick break there to explain that I misexplained part of that, uh, mainly because I forgot which parts I had actually installed in the server or requested to be installed in the server. It happens, forgetfulness over what you've ordered happens, even to a veteran sysadmin, unfortunately. Uh, but the reason that I wanted to bring this up, not only for the fact that it's bugging me, but... What I said was a RAID card is not actually a RAID card in this specific server. In most of the servers I order, it would be a RAID card. It would be an H710 or an H730 or an H330 or something like that. The important part for that RAID card would be the H, which stands for hardware. If it started with an S, that would mean it was software RAID and therefore driver dependent. That is important because if it depends on drivers, then it will not rebuild the arrayed array if something happens unless you can actually boot back into the operating system. 
this means that it's not as independent and it doesn't perform as well as an H or hardware RAID controller. But in this case, that doesn't apply. That isn't a RAID controller. In this case, what I have is an HBA, and the specific part is an HBA355I. Again, alphabet soup, what is this? HBA is a host bus adapter. Essentially, it is a card that you can install in the server in order to manage larger numbers of hard drives than the motherboard alone might support. Cool. 355 is just a model number. The I in this case means that it's an internal card with internal connectors. If it was an E, it would have ports on the back of the server and you would connect it to external like drive shelf or what have you. And this is why an HBA is important. I also said it's going to be using RAID 1. I'm not entirely wrong about that, but I'm not entirely right either. I am going to mirror it. And so you will have exactly the same data on both of the hard drives in case one dies. But I'm not going to be doing this via a RAID card. This firewall is going to be running OpenSense. OpenSense runs uh, or can run on the ZFS file system or ZFS if you're an American and you pronounce your letters weird. Um, ZFS is a massive topic that is entirely deserving of its own video. And so I'm not going to get deep into it right now. ZFS is a file system with the built-in ability to do a lot of its drive operations for resiliency, including mirroring the two. You might think that this goes against the whole software raid thing that I was just ranting about, mini rant. It's different in this case. And again, explaining how ZFS is different from raid or from software raid is a completely different video. I just wanted to pop in and say, not a raid card, I got that wrong. And it's not really going to be ZFS, excuse me, it's not really gonna be raid one. It's going to be a ZFS mirrored array. And you'll see that as we go and install the operating system. But for now, that should probably be it for today. I have recorded a lot more. We're going to cover the iDRAC. We're going to cover attaching virtual media. We're going to cover the installation process for OpenSense. And I might even talk a little bit more about ZFS, the details of it and why I think it's such an excellent choice for a file system. But when I recorded it all, it was way, way, way too long to put into a single video. So I'm afraid for now, you're going to just have to wait and catch part two next week. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at a brand new server in the process of getting it up and running and the hardware that's in it. I am your next door net admin. Thanks for joining me.